The Radio Memories Network is brought to you in part by Liberated Syndication, podcast publishing made easy, Libsyn.com. That's L-I-B-S-Y-N dot com. Gunsmoke trails, oh tell me of days gone by. Horsemen riding as they speed the eastern mail. It's up to you to see them through Gunsmoke Trail. Gunsmoke Trail. on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with the U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gun smoke. Starring William Conrad, the transcribed story of the violence that moved west with young America. The story of a man who moved with it. Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. Mr. Jason, dry as a bone, our last hope of water for the herd. Not quite, Pecos. Cottonwood Pond is just over the rise ahead of us. Well, it may be dry, too. Bet they haven't had a rain on the prairie for six months. It won't be dry. I've been bringing cattle up here to Dodge City for 12 years. Drought or no drought, the pond's always had water. It better have. We're losing 15 head an hour now. Can't push him much further. There'll be water. With luck, if the railroad's got the cars for us, we can start loading this afternoon. By this time... Hey, sounds like the boys up ahead run into something. Yeah, come on. There's a pond, Pecos. Plenty of water. Yeah, I guess you were right. Wonder why the herd's piling up. They ought to be stampeding for that pond. You think you have to... Hold up, Pagan. A barbed wire fence. Somebody's fenced off the pond. Mr. Jackson, it looks like we've got a fight on our hands. like it, Doc. It's too quiet. When things get too quiet in Dodge, it always means a blow-up's coming. Yeah, just sit down, Matt. You're just getting yourself a case of nerves. Yeah. You've been a law officer too long. Shot at too many times. <laughs> you're getting so you just act like a spooky old horse. You're jumpy and you're gun-shy. Yeah, hand me those forceps for you. Oh, yeah. You mean this? Mm-hmm. Thank you. Yeah. Now, you take me, Matt. I, I don't rant and rail against fate. I just sit back and take what comes. Yeah, sure, Doc. Mm-hmm. If I get a patient, fine. I steal him blind. And if I don't, well, I keep my hand in setting a broken leg on a dog. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's Glenn ought to hold him. Uh, matter of fact, I could use a fear, too. Not planning to shoot anybody, are you, Matt? Yeah, if this drought doesn't break, I'm in the mood to shoot myself. Uh, well, that's a bad one, all right. I don't think I've ever seen the prairie as dry as it is this year. Oh, there you are, Mr. Dillon. Well, come on in, Chester. I've been looking all over for you. We've got trouble, Mr. Dillon. Huh? Trouble? 
Old man Howard just sent a rider in. A trail drive's pulled in from the Big Bend. They're threatening to cut his fences so they can water the cattle at Cottonwood Pond. Well, as you blow up, Matt, a real head-on smash. A thirsty herd against that skin flint Howard. Uh, uh, ah, bet I could get myself a few fees out of this before it's over. <laughs> Good old Doc, always hoping for the best, huh? Now, come on, Chester, let's ride out to Cottonwood. <laughs> Dyke Howard had no call to fence that pond, Mr. Dillon. There's enough water there for all the trail herds in the next ten years. That's on his ranch, Chester. He's got a right to fence his own range. Got a right, maybe, but no decent rancher would take advantage of it. Howard's mean. Just downright mean. I think it's more than that, Chester. It's the old business of making two dollars grow where one dollar grew before. I think Howard figured on something like this when he strung that fence last month. But the trouble is... Look, that we... look yonder, Mr. Dillon. Huh? Must be 50 or 60 riders facing each other across that fence. Yeah. Looks like a couple of armies. Well, it wouldn't be the first range war that started over water rights. Come on. Come on. Who says so, mister? I do. Who are you? Dillon, U.S. Marshal out of Dodge. Marshal, that man and his gang are threatening to break through my fences and trespass on my property. I demand the protection of the law. You get it, Howard. You the owner of this herd? That's right, Marshal. Jack Jackson from the Circle Z spread down in the Big Bend. Maybe you can make this fella see reason. I got a herd of cattle here that's dying like flies for lack of water. Over there, a hundred yards is plenty of water. Only a sneaking crook is fenced it in. How about it, Marshal? Well, it's his land, Jackson. The law gives him the right to fence it. Law? Right. Everything I got in the world's tied up in that herd. There's 25 trail riders there in the saddle I can't even pay wages to if I lose these cattle. Does the law uphold pushing a man against the wall and wiping him out? It wasn't intended to. Howard, why don't you ride up here to the fence and talk, huh? I show him, Marshal. No objections at all. My fence, ain't it? Well, nobody's doubting it. Now, look, is there any reason why you can't get together with this man and let him take that herd in and water it? I made him an offer. He turned an off a dollar a head a day for water or buy the herd himself for three dollars a head. That's a pretty stiff terms, Howard. Better than losing everything like he's going to do. Why, you dirty little... All right, hold it, both of you. Now, look, if there's any gunslinging starts, I'm going to be in on it, too, you understand? Howard, I just don't understand you. Most people out here on the frontier stick together when trouble starts. They don't kick a man when he's down. And they don't look on a drought or a blizzard as a chance to make a personal cleaning. Ah, just a minute, Dylan. You call yourself a law and dodge. All right. Does the law say I can fence in my own land? It does. And never mind your opinions, Marshal. All I want out of you is enforcement of the law. All right, Howard, you'll get it. And that's all you'll get. Jackson, you better have your boys start the herd circling. Does this mean you're backing him up, Marshal? I'm backing up the law, that's all, Jackson. Then I don't think much of your laws up here. I only enforce them, I don't make them. Now, you better circle that herd. I say you better. I'm ordering my boys to shoot the first man of steel that comes through that fence. Chester, you cover Howard. Yes, sir, Mr. Dillon. And if he orders any of his men to fire a shot, kill him. Be a pleasure, Mr. Dillon. What's the idea, Marshal? You wanted the law enforced. All right, you're getting it. But I'm going to do the enforcing, Howard, not you. So if you're smart, you won't give any orders about shooting. All right, Mr. Dillon, you got a tough job. I guess you're trying to do it fair and square. Man does what he has to do, Jackson. I know. Like with me. That herd of mine beds down without water. Most of them won't get off the ground in the morning. So law or no law, we're going through that fence tonight. Matt. 
Matt? Huh? Oh, What's hello, the matter? Kenny. Bad liquor or a busted straight? Oh, neither, neither. How are you? Eager. But you probably noticed that before. Seriously, though, what's wrong? Plenty. One of the bloodiest little range wars you ever saw is just about to break. Out of Cottonwood Pond, I heard about it. Did you hear, too, that I'm back on the wrong side? Here, pull a stool up to the bar. Harry, a drink for Mr. Uh, Dillon. No, thanks. I can't stay, Kitty. I gotta try to round up some deputies, and try is probably about as far as I'm gonna get. Old Tom will be siding with the Texas boys against Howard. And against me. Maybe you ought to switch sides, Matt. Oh, sure, sure, I ought to. I know, but I can't. If I started making my own rules, it'd mean the end of law and order in Dodge City. Yeah, I just can't do it, Kitty. Much as I'd like to. Well, not for me to say. You're the one who has to decide. Uh, Yeah, Chester. What'd you find out? Mr. Hightower down at the railroad depot checked clear through to Topeka. They can't get enough cattle cars here to load that herd out before day after tomorrow. Well, that's that. It's an outside chance anyway. Yeah, I just can't do it, Kitty. Much as I'd like to. Well, not for me to say. You're the one who has to decide. Uh, yeah, Chester. What'd you find out? Mr. Hightower down at the railroad depot checked clear through to Topeka. They can't get enough cattle cars here to load that herd out before day after tomorrow. Well, that's that. It's an outside chance anyway. I thought we might load them up fast, Kitty, and run them up to Walnut Creek. It's still got a little water in it. But I... Matt, there's something wrong with a law that upholds a low-down scheme like this. Well, what Howard's doing is wrong morally, but it's right legally. i got to find a legal way to stop him. How about a lawyer could find a way of some kind... Too bad this town doesn't have one. Oh, heaven forbid. Just the same matter. Yeah, what is it? My name's Fenton. I'm range boy. Yeah, I know. You work for Dyke Howard. Well, what's on your mind? Well, Mr. Howard figures you ought to be arranging to protect his property. Jackson gave me his word he'd lay off until nine tonight. His word, sure. But Mr. Howard figures it'd be a good idea if you deputize his writers. Benton, get out. Wait a second, Martin. Go on, get out. When I want Howard's advice, I'll ask for it. Now go tell him that. Well, yeah, but... Go on, get out. Move. Deputize his writers. (laughs) <laughs> sure he'd like that. Well, it just may come to that, Mr. Dillon. I couldn't get anybody yeah, else. Fellow. You know, I ought to throw this badge away and go out there and help Jackson cut that fence. Matt, I still think what you ought yeah, to do... Yeah, I know, I know. I ought to get a lawyer. Well... Well, Kitty, the only lawyer Dodge City ever saw was that young fellow from Boston who died here last year on his way... Hey. What is it, Matt? Chester, what happened to those books of his? Well... Nobody never claimed them. They're still in the back of the jail there somewhere. It's a long shot, but... (laughs) Kitty, I love you. Come on, Chester, let's find those books. Uh, I don't know, Chester. Take a man a year just to learn what these words mean. Well, I sure can't help you, Mr. Dillon. Looky there. Tort. Replevin. Statutory malfeasance. Why don't they write the laws out in English? There'd be no work for lawyers. Uh, the only thing that might do it is this one. I'm not too sure what it means. Uh, uh, evening, Matt. Oh, Doc. Come on in here, will you? Uh, uh, I figured I'd bring you a little courage for the battle. What? Uh, might be snakes out at Cottonwood Pond. <laughs> it's very thoughtful. Uh, yes, sir. Calamel and Irish whiskey. No doctor west of the Mississippi ought to be without them. Uh, the calamel's for the women, you understand? <laughs> yeah, sure. Mm-hmm. Of course, a bottle of Jameson might not cure a patient, but it sure makes him enjoy his illness. Yeah. 
Look, uh, Doc, you've been to school. <laughs> At least I guess you have. Oh, well, uh, I browsed through a couple. Well, listen to this now, now, and tell me what you think about this paragraph right here. Uh, well, let me see. A schedule of territorial ordinances and judicial precedents. Handbook for local administrators. Uh, well, I didn't go to law school, man. No, no, but you've read books, and you know big words. Now, now listen to this. The local administrator or other duly constituted authority in a territorial division is hereby empowered to declare a state of acute emergency in case of riot, rebellion, or any natural catastrophe which threatens a general welfare. Now, Doc, would you say I'm a duly constituted authority, huh? Well, Doc City, I guess you're about the only authority. Yeah, now, now, would you say this drought we're having is a threat to the general welfare? Well, I've never seen a worse one, but... All right, now, listen to this. Yeah? During the period of such emergency, the officer in charge is authorized to seize, confiscate, allocate, or otherwise administer critical materials and facilities in accordance with a common need and his own discretion. All right, Matt. Water is a material. Yeah. And as far as keeping cattle alive is concerned, Cottonwood Pond is a facility. <laughs> That's all I wanted to know. I don't see how it'll help you, though, Matt. Howard will never stand for it. You're still going to have a pitched battle on your hands. Maybe so, Doc. But at least I'll be fighting in the way I want to fight. Well, come on, Chester. Let's go. It's 8 o'clock. <laughs> We will return for the second act of Gunsmoke in just a moment. But first, you personally can help to make sure America has an impregnable fence against invaders along all its borders by volunteering as a ground observer to watch the skies for unidentified planes. Men and women from teenage up, write or phone your nearest civil defense center. Now, the second act of Gunsmoke. It's dark now. Must be pushing nine o'clock. Hope they don't jump the gun on us, Chester. I figure Jackson will stick by his word, Mr. Dillon. If yeah, Howard lets him. You know, we might get a break in this drought if that storm comes this way. Now, I'd say it's only heat lightning. All thunder and no rain. Well, if it goes on a few more weeks, this prairie will be dried right down to the nub. Hold it. Hold it. Pull up them horses. He's right there by the fence, Mr. Dillon. Yeah, I see him. Who's there? Well, speak up. I usually answer bushwhackers with a six-gun. This is your lucky night, Fenton. Oh, Marshal, I, I didn't know... Where's your boss? All right here, Dillon. About time you got here. That mob may try to rush the fence any minute now. Not yet, Howard. I said nine o'clock. You got five minutes yet. Come on over here, Jackson. I want you to hear this, too. I kind of wish you'd stayed out of it, Marshal. I'd rather not have fought against you. Never mind. Mr. Howard, by the authority vested in me as a U.S. Marshal, and under the territorial laws and ordinances of the United States, I'm hereby declaring a state of acute emergency due to the drought. What are you talking about, Dillon? The U.S. Territorial Ordinance Schedule of 1858, Section 721C. What are you trying to say? Just this. For the duration of the emergency, I am taking charge of Cottonwood Pond in the name of the United States government. And I'm allocating use of it to Mr. Jackson here to water his herd. Now, if you want to try to make a deal with him, you got five minutes before I cut the wire and open the fence. I've never bought water before. So I'll give you ten cents a head, Howard. How about it? I'll see you dead first. And I'll be struck dead myself before I see one head of your stock onto my property. Dylan, I don't know what's behind this move. Maybe you've sold out, made a deal of your own. Easy, Howard. If not that, then you've lost your money. Your five minutes are running out now. What are you going to do? Fight. What do you think I'm going to do? Going to resist the law? You call it the law? I don't. 
Dillon, I'm giving my boys orders to shoot any man who lays a hand on this fence. And that goes for you. Listen to me, Howard. You got a chance to do something that costs you nothing and means life or death to somebody else. And you're refusing to do it. Well, I'm sorry to see it that way. But in any case, this herd gets water. Maybe they will. All right, boys, you heard it. Keep that fence covered. If they want to fight, you'll get one. Jackson, I guess I'm going to need some deputies. Well, I got 25 men here, Marshal. They're yours if you want them. All right, boys. Will you all raise your right hands? Do you swear to uphold the Constitution, ordinances, and bylaws of the United States to the best of your ability, so help you? I do. All right, you're all temporary deputy marshals acting under my orders. Now bunch the cattle in this way and start them through the fence as soon as I open the wire. They won't need much starting, Marshal. They've been smelling that water for hours. Now don't shoot unless you're fired on. If you are, protect yourselves and your herd. All right, let's go. Keep those flankers closing them in toward the opening here. They crowd on that fence, they'll cut themselves to ribbon. Right, boss. Over this way. Chester, come here, man. Yes, You got the wire cutters? Here you are, Mr. Dillon. You know, I think we got a fight on our hands. Yeah, I guess. All right, keep me covered. I'll watch the left over here. All right, Mr. Jackson. Well... There's one strand left. They're going to the fence, Mr. Howard! What's that? All right, fire at the flash, Chester. Yes, sir. Oh, my gracious, I wish there was a moon. There's one more strand. I spotted him. And here's the last one. All right, boys, the fence is open. Bring them through. Bring them through, boys. Come on. Come on. Heads up, Chester. They won't give in this season. Yeah, you can hear them out there, but you can't see for the dust. Yeah. Wind's coming up off that cloud. Oh, come on. Let's try to find Howard. I'm going to take him in for attempted murder. Last time I heard him, he was down along the fence here, Summers. All right, boys! Fire the flash! What the? Look! Look at them torches, Mr. Dillon. They're setting fire in the grass. Yeah. As dry as it is, they'll start the whole prairie blazing. Jackson! Get your herd through the fence. They're trying to stampede it. It'll take more than fire to turn those cattle away from water. I guess you're right. Look, send as many as your boys as you can to help me. We got to get that fire stopped and fast. <laughs> We're winning or losing. Well, if that backfire holds that we're we're winning, Chester. Otherwise, couldn't have been a worse time. The prairie's dry as gunpowder. Well, at least the herd's safe. They wouldn't leave that pond if the whole world caught fire. Any orders for the boys, Mister Dillon? Uh, yeah, just have them keep working along the edge of the backfire, pick us, beat out any sparks that get across. Huh? Right, Marshal, I got you. Uh, have you seen anything of the Howard gang? Oh, not a sign. I guess they figured they'd done all they could. Yeah, maybe. Mister Dillon, I'd swear a storm's going to break. I, I can halfway smell the rain. I don't know about that, Chester. But it's doing one thing that won't help us. What do you mean? Look, the wind's shifting. It's starting to drive those flames across the backfire. Well, if it catches there again, it'll get clear away from yeah, us. Yeah, it sure will. Now, come on. Let's grab some of the boys and start working behind yes, it. Yes, go, Dylan. Uh, well, Fenton, I figured you'd be halfway to the Mexican border by now. Well, you figured wrong. You keep your hands still, both of you. One move and it's your last move. That's about the way you planned it anyway, isn't it? You wiped us out, Dylan. That backfire of yours took the ranch house and the barns. Nothing for us to do now but trick. Only first, I'm going to kill you. Hit the dirt, Chester. Patton, drop the gun. You're under arrest. I'll drop it, you dirt. Dylan. Dylan. Dylan, I... Uh... Well, you warned him, Mr. Dillon. Yeah, it doesn't matter much now. Look, Chester. Yes, sir. It's jumped the backfire. 
With that wind driving it, it'll burn the whole prairie from here clear to the river. And Dodge City along with it. Not a way in the world of stopping it either. Heard the shot, Marshal. You all right? I'm sick at my stomach, that's all. Dodge City's going to burn, Jackson, and there's nothing we can do. I sure didn't figure on this. I let him have the herd, gladly. No, it's my fault. I should have jumped him first. The man does what he has to, Marshal. I don't think that's your way. Well, maybe my way's the wrong way. When it leads to burning 10,000 acres of prairie in a whole town, there must be something Wait, wrong. Wait, Mr. Dillon. What is it, Chester? I told you, I, I told you, I could smell it. Smell what? What the devil he... Rain! Yes, sir. By heavens, it's starting to rain. By heaven may be the right expression. <laughs> well, I don't know about that, but I know it's the only thing that can save Dodge. <laughs> well, come on, rain! Faster! Cut loose and rain, will you? What's it doing in this? Mr. Dillon, look at it. Beat down on that fire. <laughs> right. <laughs> Chester, you know, out here on the frontier sometimes, when, when a thing like this happens, it makes you wonder if, if maybe... Well, I don't know. Come on, Chester, let's find our horses. It, it sure not letting up in here, Mr. Dillon. No. We're still quite a ways from Tom. Uh... Let's swing over along the bluff, Chester, and find a place to wait it out for a while, huh? That's what I was hoping you'd say. Come on. Well, it took a long time to break loose, but it sure made up for luck. Wow! I never saw lightning this before. Uh, uh, usually, lets up once the rain starts. I guess it's just a freak storm anyway. Uh, what? Off your horse, Chester. Flat on the ground. Now. I saw the flash, Mr. Dillon. It come from that lone cottonwood tree. Yeah. It's a bad spot. He's got cover and we haven't. Well, I guess we found out what happened to Mr. Howard. All right, Howard. Come on with your hands up. You're under arrest. Why don't you come and get it, Dillon? I'm going to flip a shot at the tree, Chester. Roll away as soon as I fire. Yes, sir. All right. That was close. There's enough light for him to see. He's got all the odds. If he keeps it up, he'll get us sure. Maybe we might just well rush him, Mr. Dillon. We haven't got much to lose. That's an outside chance, Chester. And he's bound to get one of us. Yeah, but this way it's both. Yeah, I know. All right. We'll go in on the count of three. And out and move fast. Yes, sir. And, uh... Good luck, Chester. See you, Mr. Young. All right. One. Two. Three. Four. Mr. Dillon, what happened? It was lightning. He struck the tree. I think Howard's lying over there on the ground. Come on. Yeah. He's done, all right. He said he'd be struck dead before he'd ever give in. Well, he was. By heaven, I don't know. The second time tonight. <laughs> you know, Chester, I think I'm going to change my ways. Gunsmoke, 
transcribed under the direction of Norman MacDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. Tonight's story was specially written for Gunsmoke by Les Crutchfield, with music composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Featured in the cast were Harry Bartell and Lou Krugman, with Joe Duvall, Barney Phillips, and Georgia Ellis. Harley Bear is Chester, and Howard McNair is Doc. Join us again next week as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal, fights to bring law and order out of the wild violence of the West in Gunsmoke. Where there's crime afoot, look for gangbusters. Tonight, listen for CBS Radio's Gangbusters...